Uh, my name is Kristen Wolf. I'm in the screenwriting cohort. I'm a white person, hopefully a little bit sun-kissed. Uh, I've got short brown hair, black rimmed glasses, black t-shirt. I'm sitting in front of a weathered gray wood wall. Um, instead of reading from the piece I'm workshopping here, I decided to read from one of my novels and I chose this one because I have adapted it into a screenplay and I'm actively working to get it to the big screen. Um, it takes place, the story takes place in the Romantic era. So just imagine we're in the mid 1800s. Uh, it's a love story between two women. One is a composer, the other a musician. Uh, and this passage describes one of the women observing the other in the moments before they meet. God, you are beauty itself, I said before I could stop myself. And I wasn't speaking to the creator. I was speaking to her. Though she stood across the drawing room, distant enough not to hear me, not to notice my bewildered stare and watering mouth. We had just arrived at the estate, Christopher and I. Footmen were busy whisking the capes from our shoulders when I saw her, felt her, rather, for the encounter sent flames roaring through the hollows of my body. All this before I became fully aware of what I had beheld, of what the aspects caught in the net of my periphery might embody. It was the mere suggestion of her that impaled me. Dark hair glazed with sunset, green eyes aflame, cheekbones aroused, stem of delicate throat, collarbones spread like wings, a velvet gown, the color of blood, low at the neck. The footman dropped my cape, bowed and apologized profusely, no doubt expecting an outburst, but I had no words. In my experience, women are composed of two elements, beauty and light. Of the two, the former is the most celebrated, the most readily observed. It is the physical tidings, the graceful arcs, the beneficent swellings that make men swoon and artists weep. It is the physical majesty of a woman's body that lures, the conduit that transfers sudden heat into the lover's core. Then there is the light. This is a somewhat more ephemeral element, but no less vital. I suppose I could describe it as a certain cast of character, a measure of aliveness, a discernment, a complicity, a manner of beholding one's world and of being beheld. Outwardly, it arises as a brilliance radiating from the eyes, a carving shine. Finding such luster in the eyes of a woman is an intoxicant and one a thousandfold more potent than physical beauty. It is a treasure bestowed on whoever learns to cherish it, an eternal power that never surrenders, never dims, even as time fades the raw beauty. I almost feel I'm wasting my time in trying to portray the nature of this light, that by so attempting I am diminishing its vigor, but God help me, I know it when it comes before me. Suffice it to say then that when Ava lifted her green eyes in my direction, I was struck blind for the light of her, for the cunning feline luminescence.